Welcome to On the Right Track, Career Stories, a video series and podcast about real people, their real careers, and real lives. I'm your host, Jane Christoffi, and today I'm talking to Stacey McLennan, award-winning interior designer and business owner. Let's listen to some of her stories. Stacey, welcome, and Hi. thank you for coming. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Now, can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Sure. So I'm an interior designer, a registered interior designer. We do uh, renovation projects, uh, new build projects in correlation with architects. And we basically are almost like what you would consider an interior architect. So where architects would do drawings for exterior elements of a home, we do the drawings for the interior aspects. So everything from partition plans, power plans, lighting plans, so very technical sets of drawings. And then we also offer services right down to styling your home, furniture, accessories, and that sort of thing. Okay, now can you tell us how you got where you are today? Sure. So it's a fun <laughs> kind of story. I actually started off uh, going to university at U of T for criminology. So I wanted to be a police officer or something in that field. And I think the main, um, the main thing that I felt growing up was that I wanted to have a job that was exciting and where I got to do something different every day. So I didn't want to go to an office and sit at the same desk every day and do the same thing every day. To me, I felt like that would be not something that I could really jump into. So my, my, my dream was to have a job where I would be doing something new every day, helping people and, and you know, having a lot of variety in what I do. So originally I thought I'd be a police officer. I grew up in a very small town of about um, 3,000 people. And in my town, we didn't have interior designers or interior decorators at that time, going back that long ago as well. So I didn't really even understand or know that there was a career of um, interior design. So I started school in Toronto after high school at U of T and I actually completed a, a degree in criminology and I was geared towards uh, becoming a police officer. And then while I was looking for a job um, in the 90s, I was working as a waitress at a, a restaurant. And one of the other waitresses there was uh, taking the interior design program. And um, she would come in with her homework and her portfolio and I would be looking through it. And I always loved interior design growing up. I would move furniture around and help my dad build little things around the house. So I always had an interest in it, but I just had no idea that you could make a profession of it. So when I saw her portfolio, I thought, this is amazing. And so I literally went from <laughs> graduating from criminology to going to the International Academy of Design to speak with them about the program and then really learning um, more about what's involved in the profession of interior design. And I loved it. And so I ended up registering for the school and I took the program and that's how I started out in this, in this profession. Okay. So after you did that program, what happened? Did you start your own business or did you work for someone else? No, so I graduated from the program and then I actually worked for a company focusing more on corporate interior design. So we would do office buildings, um, a lot of government projects and that sort of thing. And um, I did that for about five or six years. And at the end of that, um, I auditioned for an HGTV program. So it was really kind of on the whim. I was at a wedding and one of my friends who worked for um, Alliance Atlantis said to me, oh, you should, you should um, audition for this show. We're, we're asking Canadian designers or architects or builders, um, contractors to enter into this contest. And basically you wanted, they wanted us to provide a, a little skit on why we would be good for the show and what kind of background we have and what we do. And so my husband and I made a video. We had just bought our first house and we did a little walkthrough video and we submitted it and I didn't really think much of it. And then um, probably about two or three months later, I got a call at work and uh, they said, you've been narrowed down to the final 10 contestants. And I said, who is this? <laughs> like I totally thought it was a, a prank. So anyways, I ended up going into this competition so it was one of HGTV's first shows called Superstar Challenge. I and saw this, by the way. Did you see it? <laughs> I had blonde hair then. <laughs> um, so basically what they asked us to do is compete in design challenges for over three days. And so we did all of these different kinds of um, design challenges with amongst 10 of us. And then they narrowed it down to 
three contestants, and then from there they decided who would win. And the winner of that um, that challenge would then go on to design somebody's living room and dining room in 48 hours. So I ended up winning that, and we did we did a real renovation in 48 hours. <laughs> And, um, and then after that, I was offered another program with HGTV, which was called Kitchen Equipped. And so um, I shot 36 uh, episodes for that program. And then after that, I decided to try and go out on my own. So up until that point, I was working for a corporate firm and we were doing corporate design. And then I thought, you know, if at all, this is the time that I should try and do something on my own. So I opened up my own business and I started focusing more on residential projects because in corporate design, uh, you're often working on very large footprints, and so you need uh, more people in the office. So because when I first started on my own, it was just myself, I decided, you know, if it's if it's just me, I think I have to maybe take on smaller scopes of work, smaller projects. And also, I was starting to get a lot more work in residential because people that I designed their offices for were now calling me and asking me if I could do, you know, their kitchen and that sort of thing. So. I ended up over the years focusing more and more on residential, and now my firm does strictly residential. It's quite different between corporate and commercial and residential design. There's different suppliers, different materials, finishes, different building code issues. So um, in order to really focus and do the best job that I feel like we can do, we I made the conscious effort to focus more on residential projects. So that's what we do now. Okay. Now, can you tell us a little bit about what it was like to transition into being a business owner? It was really scary because I had no experience or background in that. Um, as I mentioned in university, I took criminology and then I graduated from that and took interior design. So my, I had no training or, or skill sets in running a business. So um, I think that was the biggest challenge for me. I, I felt like I had talent in design, I had done the education in design, and I had the experience behind me by that point. So I felt like I was really well equipped to do the design work, but the business side of it was something that I had no experience in at all. Um, so I found that very challenging, and, and as I started to get busier with my, my projects, um, I didn't really even know what the next step would be. So who do I hire? Do I hire an admin person? Do I hire an, an accountant or a bookkeeper? Do I hire another designer? So those kind of questions really uh, started to pop up and I wasn't sure what the right move would be and I was terrified to make the wrong move and, and um, see everything that I had been working hard for go in the wrong direction. So that's when I hired a business advisor, um, which was probably one of the best things I've done. So that's one of the things I think I've really learned in running my own business is that you can't know everything, and so when there are things that you don't know or areas that you're not uh, well equipped in, that's when you do need to reach out to somebody else and, and bring in the people that have those strengths. You can't be good at everything, so you focus on the things that you're good at, and you bring in people that can fill in the gaps. Mm -hmm. There must have been some time at the beginning when you were doing it all, though. Oh, there was, and I think, uh, you know, even now, <laughs> I would say I feel like I'm always, you know, doing doing this and that. So I think one, one thing also for people to really know is um, when you're an entrepreneur and you own your own business, it's very hard work and you work a lot of hours. A lot of times it doesn't feel like work because you're so excited about what you're doing and it's your own. And so there's this energy and this buzz that you get from, from getting projects and doing projects and seeing people's responses to the work you're doing. So there's definitely a lot of excitement around it, but it's a lot of work. And so you really need to, you know, be flexible and be willing to jump in and do everything right from, you know, lugging samples around to a job site to, you know, the accounting aspect of it to, um, you know, hiring people, picking the finishes, doing the drawings. So I think you, you need to be prepared to be well-rounded and to really get your hands into everything and dive into everything because um, early on you, you definitely need to do that and you need to have a, a very flexible attitude. <laughs> Okay, now tell us a little bit about your TV work these days or any other media uh, sure. outside of the office. Yeah, so, so basically um, I am a regular contributor to CityLine, which is a, a Canadian uh, produced uh, program, uh, like a daytime series program on lifestyle, design, health, wellness. Um, it's hosted by Tracy Moore, and um, so I contribute to that show probably I would say every two or three months we'll go on and showcase our projects. So I've been very fortunate in that I, um, I was able to early on in my business um, 
be able to present some of our projects on the show and then they've I've kept up that relationship and they've asked me to come back whenever we have anything to showcase. So that's been a great tool in advertising and getting, you know, our, our um, business model or our business out there and really having people see the work that we can do. Um, so I still do that show. I don't do any more shows with HGTV just because again, the focus of my business is actually doing the uh, interior design projects and having ongoing projects. So we're very busy in that aspect of it. And so the, um, the advertising that I do on, on City Line and in any design magazines is really just, um, you know, us being able to showcase our, our completed projects, which again is an amazing opportunity to have. That's wonderful. So exciting. Now, what does a typical day look like in your career and in your personal life? How do you balance everything? Well, sometimes there is no personal life. <laughs> um, I think that's the thing that I really love about this, about having my own business and this type of job is that um, it really is unpredictable. So it's very exciting because you wake up and you don't really know what's going to happen in the day. Um, so because we are involved in a lot of construction projects that are happening, whether it's an addition or a new build, uh, we have job sites that we have to go to during construction. So I find that really fun. I love that part of the job where we get to go to the job site and see things coming together, talk to the contractors and all the various tradespeople there, get their opinion, their feedback, um, see their excitement about how things are coming together. Um, and it's, it's, I find that very fun and, and I love interacting with all the tradespeople too because I'm, I'm preparing the drawings and showing them the drawings, but they're building it. So it's, it's exciting for me to collaborate with them and get their feedback as they're building it. Um, so that could be one day on a job site. Um, the next day we could be in, in stores sourcing products such as plumbing fixtures or appliances or tiles or stone slabs. Um, so we're out, we're out on the road quite a bit. Or I could be in the office working on AutoCAD drawings, which is the program that we do all of our drawings on. Um, and in those instances when we're, we're in the drawing phase, um, we can be at our desk the entire day working on drawing. So I'm still very involved in the drawing production as well. Um, I, that's the part I enjoy. So rather than having a large team of people that I'm managing and overlooking and um, reviewing their work, I'd rather be involved in the actual work and the design of it. That's where I get my energy from. So um, over the years, I've sort of expanded my business and then now it's down to three of us. And I find it's perfect just because I am still very involved in every project. I get to be involved in the parts that I find are really exciting. And um, I also have the comfort of knowing that everything that's gone out, I've reviewed and gone over and I feel very comfortable issuing it. So I think for, for me, this is the perfect, perfect scale. And, um, and I love the fact that every day is different. So I'm not just simply managing people. I'm really getting to do a lot of different things. What's something that really has surprised you about your work that maybe when you started out in interior design, you weren't expecting? Um, I think I think probably um, the impact of what we do on on how people live. I, I I think initially I just thought you know it'll be great to design spaces that look nice, but the more and more we work on projects, the more I realize. Uh, what we're doing is really solution based and problem solving. So we're trying to not only make a space look great, but to function much better and to create uh, spaces that work well for our clients so that they can enjoy life and not be inhibited by the space that they're in. So for an example, like mudroom storage, you know, if you can squeeze in a little mudroom at a side entry, that's always something that people love just because then they have a spot to put all the boots and the, the coats and whatnot. So it can be something like that or just some, some kind of design solution that really makes things easier on a daily basis for people so it's more enjoyable for them so I think initially I really thought you know this is something that I would love to do just because of the aesthetic of it but now I I, I appreciate how much what we do is function based and, and solves problems and helps people enjoy life a bit more. Very interesting okay so when you were a little girl you would help your dad with projects around the house you said and you never really knew about career possibilities in interior design right. or that type of thing. So you go into criminology because you want an interesting variety in your work. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that um, may have suggested that this was a direction for you as a young person? Did you have skills or interests 
that would have led you down this path if you had known about it? Right. Well, I think I always, at, even at a very young age, loved um, the idea of like decorating and how the space would look. Uh, I remember my sister and I, I have a sister who's two years younger, and we used to wake up really early on Saturday morning while my parents were still sleeping. And I'd coax her into helping me move all the furniture around in the house so that when our parents woke up, everything would be in a different space, in a different layout. And so I think I always uh, really kind of wanted to manipulate space and do something with space. Um, and I would say, actually, funny enough, though, my sister was probably more creative than I was growing up. I, I, I don't think I really had the creative side of it. Um, I was more so function-based, like, why is this sofa here? It doesn't make sense. Let's put it over here. And let, so I think I always like to kind of problem solve, almost like a puzzle. Um, and, and so I think I had that early on. And I love to figure things out. Like, I remember building a dog house with my dad and helping him cut wood for um, installing trim work and that sort of thing. And I always loved just working with the tools and also figuring out how things can be put together. So I think I always loved that aspect of it. And my dad would drag me into Canadian Tire with him in the mornings. And I just loved walking down the aisles and looking at all the tools and everything. So I do think that maybe, uh, you know, it's one of those kind of things you're just born with, that, that instinct to want to do that kind of work. Um, so I think I always loved that aspect of it. And then, and that definitely influenced uh, me early on. My mom also loved to decorate. Um, so she would, you know, have all the matching pillows and cushions and that sort of thing. So I probably got a little bit of that from her as well on the, on the more uh, decor side. Um, but I think also just um, as, as time has gone on and I've fine tuned skills and whatnot, I think like growing up in a small town and being outdoors a lot, um, maybe that has influenced some of the design decisions that I make in terms of, um, you know, details and elements that we add to the space. So I think probably there's not anything particular that has influenced me one particular thing, but maybe a lot of different things have sort of influenced our, my design and the decisions that I've made. Love it. Okay, so um, high school kids, young people, so university um, age students, high school students, even middle school, they're, they feel very overwhelmed about making decisions and often they have to choose in grade 10, you know, mm -hmm. uh, science yeah. or no science, for example. Yeah. Uh, what advice would you give to students in high school who are feeling pressure to choose a career direction, feel that they have to make a decision? Right. I think it's very hard. And I remember um, at that age in high school, going to the guidance counselor and trying to figure out what you know what courses I should be taking at school in order to get into the right universities and and not even knowing what I wanted to take at university um, obviously I started out in criminology and I ended up in interior design so I think um, I think what I would say is really focus on what you enjoy and what you like to do uh, because I think what will happen is what if, if it's something that you enjoy and you like you will do it and it doesn't feel like work when it does feel like a grind like work you're not going to enjoy doing it you're not going to want to spend the time doing it and i think if you really enjoy it and you'll spend a lot of time doing it you can't help but get very good at it <laughs> because of the practice so i think as long as you pick something that you like to do and you're committed to doing it um, i think that's probably a key thing and i think also um it sometimes and i i do this now you don't think about things on a here i am today what should i do today you are constantly thinking about the future what should i do in the future but i think uh you really have to just say okay this is a program that i need to you know get to the next level i'm going to take this even if i don't really know where i'm going to be in five years i'm going to take this because it will open up other opportunities for me so you just have to sometimes put your step forward step forward take the next step and not really worry too much about in the future. Things will fall into place. And I think as long, again, as you're doing what you enjoy doing, you might not know exactly what field, like even for example, in interior design, there are so many different um, venues that you could go into. You could be a supplier, you could be a, you know, a manufacturer, a fabricator. There's so many different elements, but just as long as you kind of have an idea of what you enjoy doing and, and just take the necessary steps to move forward, don't give up, don't, don't let all the questions and unanswered uh, questions really bog you down and terrify you because it can be terrifying. 
sometimes you just have to keep moving forward and it'll fall into place. Great advice. Okay, so for kids launching into the real world, what skill or skills do you think are most important in, in this year, in this day? Yeah, yeah. I think um, definitely you have to be um, willing to pitch in whenever, whenever need be. So, um, you know, we all kind of have an idea of what we want to do and what our job might entail, but sometimes there are things that are thrown at you that are totally not what you would expect. But I think if you show a willingness to be a, a team player and to pitch in when needed, I think that goes a long way. So starting out in a career, um, if people see that you're willing to do what it takes and, and stay a little bit extra um, or, you know, short to work really happy, <laughs> that, those little things can go a long way. Return a phone call. Um, you know, in this day and age, sometimes it's hard to even get a response. So do your best to to do your best, uh, you know, act how you would want somebody to act towards you. And I think just being willing to pitch in when when you need to pitch in and being flexible is a huge thing, initially starting into any kind of job. And then I think, again, focusing and honing in on what you're good at and really just specializing in that because there are so many you know, so many different things that people can do, but, and if you're, if you're doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that, sometimes you're spread so thin that you can't really focus and get a lot of experience in one certain area. So I, I personally think focus on what you're very good at and, um, and what you really enjoy. And then you'll become the person that people know to go to for that thing. Excellent advice. Okay. Last question for you, Stacey. Um, if you weren't an interior design and business owner, today, what would you be doing? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I think um, maybe a police officer. Yeah, <laughs> I, I love animals. When I was very young, I thought I wanted to be a vet, but I don't like blood. So <laughs> that was out. Uh, I don't know. I think I think um, I can't even imagine now uh, what you know, what I would rather do. I think maybe a project manager for another company. Sometimes I think, uh, you know, if I ever want to slow down a little bit and maybe have a job where I am working part-time, what kind of work would I want to do? I might want to be a project manager and just be on-site coordinating with all of the trades and different suppliers and, and people on, on a job site because I do find the job site really fun and exciting to be on. So I might do something like that. I might do something where I volunteer with animals. Um, I love... I love dogs, and so I might do something like that. I don't know. That's a good question. I'll have to think about that. <laughs> well, listen, this has been a wonderful conversation. Thank you so much for sharing your experiences, your tips, and the inside of your interesting business and career. Um, I really appreciate your time today, Stacey. And okay, great. Uh, thank you for joining us. And again, thank you, Stacey McLennan, for your time today. Thanks, Jane. Okay, see you later. Thank you so much for joining us. If you like the video, give us a like, and even better, subscribe. For more information, check out the links below. You'll get lots of scoop about other social media platforms, more information about our interview guests, and the services available from Right Track Education. Have a great day and best wishes to everyone.